From a secret way to kill the warden to a creeper's worst fear. Every Minecraft mob has its own weakness, so this is every single mob and what it's weak to. Starting with the weakest mobs and ending with the strongest mobs in the game. Slimes are the only mob you can kill with just a single punch, but the bigger versions are a little stronger. Luckily, slimes have terrible pathfinding and won't avoid things like lava, cactus, or big holes like this, making them easier to trap than any other mob. Sea turtles might have the most enemies in the game. Not only do all types of zombies try to break their eggs, but skeletons, ocelots, wolves, stray cats, and even zoglins will attack baby sea turtles. I don't know what they did to make so many enemies so cute. Somehow bees are even cuter, which is why no mobs in the game try to attack it. However, if they try and pollinate with the roses, they'll take damage just the same as mobs that walk over it. They'll also die after stinging anything that attacks the hive. All types of fish will start to drown after just 15 seconds on land. Really though, they don't even try to get back into the water. They just kind of flop around and wait for it to be over. Dolphins, however, can last over two minutes minutes on land, and if it's raining, they can survive forever. However, dolphins do need air to survive, so if they're underwater for too long, they'll actually start to drown. At least they try to find water. Squids literally just sit there and move like that. Endermites used to have a huge weakness that nobody knows about. Before 1.15, if they stood on salt sand, they'd suffocate and die. This was eventually fixed, so now their only predator is Enderman. So golems aren't exactly the strongest defense your base can have. Their attacks don't even do damage, and they're made even worse by the fact that they can't even survive in warm climates like deserts or in the rain. They also only have two hearts of health. I'll stick to iron golems if I were you. Snow golems aren't the only mod that doesn't like the rain though. Pandas are actually terrified of thunderstorms and they don't just take damage in the rain. They hide their face and whimper as though they're actually scared. Also, did you know pandas eat cake? That's not a weakness or anything. I just thought it was cool. Ah, no! Us a lot seem more adapted to the tough jungle environment as they've learned to avoid fall damage and to hunt chickens for food. However, they are still terrified of humans and run away faster than almost any mob in the game. It's worth there if you can get an ocelot or cat to stick around though, as they're actually super good at keeping away phantoms. In fact, a phantom won't come within 16 blocks of a cat at all. But if you want to avoid phantoms altogether, just make sure you get a good night's rest. Taming ocelots removes this weakness, just the same as taming a wolf removes theirs. And this one is the strangest so far. For some reason, wolves are super scared of llamas and will run away the seconds they get anywhere near them. I wonder why they hate them so much. Tamed wolves, however, are super chill with llamas until their human decides otherwise. But this is the same with every other mob in the game, except for creepers. So I guess this makes them weak to creepers? The only other thing dogs have to worry about is me! <laughs> Despite being possibly the most peaceful mob in the game, sheep have their own enemies too. Wild wolves will attack any nearby sheep they can find. They don't even fight back the poor things. Both rabbits and foxes are also scared of wolves and will be hunted down if they go anywhere near a pack of them. The scariest part is that the wolves don't even eat the meat the animals drop, meaning they only hunt for the fun of it. Now do you understand why I hate them? Oh yeah, and rabbits are also scared of cats and players too. Bats are easily the least dangerous mob in the game. These things are so stupid. In fact, that's actually their weakness. Bats are so dumb that sometimes when they're flying around a cave, they'll fly straight into a pool of lava. I get why they don't even drop XP now. Silverfish take the term strength in numbers to the next level. On their own, they're harmless, but if you're trapped in a room with 15 of them, they get a little scarier. However, if you have a weapon strong enough to kill them in one hit, they won't call in support. Parrots are actually a super useful thing to have around as they warn you of nearby enemies and don't get attacked by mobs. They are, however, deathly allergic to cookies, and feeding one to a parrot will kill it instantly. This is actually because in real life, parrots are allergic to chocolate, so uh, <laughs> keep that in mind, I guess. You probably already know that villagers are super weak to zombies. They don't even try to fight back. However, did you know that they're even more scared of pillagers? In fact, in a raid, villagers will actually start to sweat because they're so scared. Thank God they have a hero like me to protect them! Witches might seem like one of the most dangerous mobs in the game, but they're actually completely defenseless against ranged attacks. If you want to abuse this the most, try Try grabbing a crossbow and a power five bow and shooting them right after each other. The witch dies instantly. Not so powerful now, are you? Striders obviously feel most comfortable in lava. I mean, you've seen what they look like on land, so predictably, if you go to all the effort to bring one from the nether into the overworld, first of all, you're a monster. But secondly, they'll take damage in water. So if you need an unconventional string farm, you know what to do. Magma cubes are more dangerous than slimes, but they still have the same issue. However, the only danger they'll really face is those big cliffs in the nether since they're immune to fire damage. You may think they're also weak to water like striders, but for some reason they just like chilling it. I guess there's no water in the nether, so it kind of makes sense. Somehow, even chickens have enemies, just only in certain biomes. Chickens in tiger biomes have to be on the lookout for foxes on the prowl, while jungle chickens get hunted by ocelots. Chicken jockeys, however, actually have a huge weakness almost nobody knows about. For some reason, the AI for them thinks there's only one block tall, and will sometimes run into small holes in caves, causing the zombie to suffocate and die. <laughs> Idiot. Oh crap! Shulkers are annoyingly hard to kill with their arms 
armor and ability to teleport. But we can actually use this against them. If you place water where a shulker is sitting, it'll teleport away immediately, leaving you free to loot up the end city in peace. Everybody knows that spiders are weak to bane of arthropods, but I guarantee you've used it so little you didn't know that hitting a spider with it doesn't just deal extra damage, but also gives it slowness 4, rendering them almost totally harmless. And by the way, Bane of Arthropods 5 is so powerful it can one-hit a spider on a wooden sword. Why does nobody use this? Cave spiders are of course a little more dangerous, but if you bring some milk with you to the mineshaft, these things are basically useless. Still scary though. Creepers are even scarier though. I've played this game for over 10 years now and I still get freaked out whenever one jumps me in a ravine, but they do seem considerably less scary when you see them run away like babies from cats and ocelots. And it's the same for piglins too. These things are terrifying when they're attacking you in big groups, but if you chuck down any blue light source like a soul torch or campfire, they just kind of flop around and wait for it to be over. They're also scared of zoglins and zombified piglins, which I think is fair. If I saw a zombified version of myself, I don't think you'd ever see me again. Even though they're a type of fish, I, I think, guardians won't actually suffocate when they're outside of water. However, they do bounce around like crazy, which can cause them to take full damage and die on land. If you don't know that zombies burn in the sunlight, then you might have to head back to Minecraft Kindergarten. But zombies do have other weaknesses too. They're actually terrible swimmers, so if they accidentally wander into some water, they'll just sink to the bottom, suffocate, and turn into a drown. When a husk drowns though, it'll actually turn into a zombie first, and then into a drown. They also don't burn in daylight, which doesn't make much sense, but hey, these things exist. What do I know? Skeletons and strays also burn in the daylight like zombies, but they're deathly afraid of wolves. I guess skeletons are the best way to get bones. However, a little known fact is that both skeletons and zombies are weak to healing potions. Just two direct hits can instantly kill a skeleton in full diamond. Hoglins are massive, brutal creatures that are scared off by... Uh, fungus? That's right, whenever these huge hogs go near a warped fungus, they'll immediately run the other way. The same goes for respawn anchors and nether portals. I guess they're scared of going through and turning into zoglins, which, by the way, are one of the only mobs in the entire game that doesn't have a weakness. They're immune to drowning and fire. Iron golems are also immune to drowning, but they're so heavy they can't actually swim. This means you can trap an iron golem underwater and take it out super easily. Given their literally made out of fire, it's not hard to guess that blazes are weak to water, but it's a little inconvenient to make use of this. So instead, try bringing some snowballs to the fortress, as they actually damage them quite a lot. Just seven snowballs can take out a blaze despite dealing no damage to any other mob. Most people try to kill gas with their own fireballs, which, don't get me wrong, is extremely fun, but also kind of dangerous. Gas actually only have five hearts of health, meaning that instead of risking your life for a stylish kill, you can just shoot them once with a power two bow. Now that is weak. Endermen hate rain and water and will freak out and teleport as soon as they touch any. This means if you're being chased by one, just chuck some water at your feet and you'll be completely safe. Wither skeletons look fierce and they do deal a ton of damage, but because they're undead, they actually die in just one swing of a smite v diamond sword. Ravagers, however, are much, much tougher. Can you believe these things literally have 50 hearts of health? Some people think it's best to use bows or lava to kill these things, but they don't know you can do this. Ravagers won't walk over sweet berry bushes, meaning if you simply just place a line of them outside a village, you'll not only keep them out, but also almost almost every single mob in the game. Now it's on to the bosses. The Wither is by far the easiest one to take out as it has a huge weakness. The Wither actually dies in under 20 hits to a Smite V sword on hard mode. So as long as you build a long tunnel like this and spawn at the end of it, you'll be able to take it down in under a minute. The Warden is actually just as easy to trick as the Wither. The Warden is attracted to any sound regardless of what it is. But because no mobs spawn in the deep dark, you're usually the only thing making noise. However, if you do something as simple as making a redstone clock attached to a bell or note block, the warden will be totally distracted and let you loot as much as you want to. And yes, the ender dragon does also have a massive weakness you can exploit to make the fight super easy. Simply wait for her to fly down to the bedrock portal, place two obsidian like this, and use beds to blow her up as she flies down. There's also a way to do this without even waiting for the dragon to perch, but it requires a specific setup, perfect luck, and lots of skill. When I try it, I just end up expl- I can't be bothered to scream anymore, my throat hurts. Just subscribe, okay? Please, I need money to buy bread. 